These professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. That would just disappear in seconds. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. You can't eat raw pigeon. No. Cooking doesn't get better than this. These four chefs have been working in professional kitchens for years, but they want to prove they can compete at their industry's highest level. We want to uncover a future cookery star, one seriously focused individual who is competitive enough to go all the way to culinary greatness. We want to find a chef to which cooking is a passion. It has to come from the heart. In today's show, the professionals will be set three gruelling tests. Only the best chef will make it through to the quarter-final. In this, the first of the tests, the contestants will not be cooking for Michelle. As one of only a handful of two Michelin star chefs in the country, the four contestants will have to earn the right to cook for him. To whittle them down to the best three, he's sending in his senior sous chef, Monica, to judge them. Move it! Get that garnish on the plate now! Monica, my sous chef, has been working for me for over five years. I trust her judgment. I know that if she says it's all right, then it's good. Monica wants to determine who she'd be prepared to put in front of Michelle. Only the best three chefs will have the privilege to cook for him. The other will be going home. Today's skill test is to gut and fillet this lovely mackerel. Filleting fish is an essential skill for any chef at any level followed by the palate test, which is to take the same mackerel and cook it for us. Michelle would expect them to come in here and cook this fish perfectly, not underdone, not overdone. Let's get them in. Twenty-nine-year-old father of two, Scott, has been a chef for 13 years. Chefing is my life. I've never thought about anything else from a younger age. I enjoy food. I enjoy the buzz, the adrenaline. Um, it's what gets me through life. Scott, you have 10 minutes. Off you go. Cooking is what I do do best, and being under pressure just makes me thrive. It just gives me a buzz. You've only got two minutes. That's it. Time's up. Turn the heat off. All right, Scott, skills test. The first fillet that you took off was no problem. Second fillet, you missed a bit there. Overall, that's a good effort. The seasoning of your mackerel is really, really good. The only th fault that I find in there is the flesh isn't as cooked as it should be. Nice. Oily fish and the slippery butter and the salty sharpness that comes with capers. Very nice sauce. Very good accompaniment to a well-prepared fish. Thank you very much. Overall, I was very, very pleased. Under the circumstances, I'm really, really pleased with what I've done. Next up is 32-year-old Hayley, a self-taught chef from Kent. I'm definitely a, a kind of person that thrives in a competitive environment. 
MasterChef is going to be a real challenge for me and um, it's going to be one that I'm going to really enjoy. You've got ten minutes. Good luck. My dream is definitely to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. To be able to cook for someone like that and then get their feedback will be one of my best dreams. Hayley, you've got four minutes left. Your time's up. Your time's up. Right, Hayley, skills test. Obviously, you've filleted fish before. I thought you did a really good job. Onto your palate test. The fish wasn't yet cooked, and you put the cream in. Instantly, that cooled the pan down, stopped the fish cooking, and the fish is still raw. If I was to serve that to Michel, he would be really, really upset. I'm not sure about you, because you, you filleted the fish like you knew what you were doing, yet you cooked the fish like you didn't. Um, I was very, very nervous, and um, I panicked. I'm very disappointed with my performance, but I can't change the clocks now. <laughs> I just hope they give me another chance. At only 26, Matt is the head chef of a prestigious Scottish hotel. I've always wanted to be a chef. I've never really considered doing anything else. It's, um, it's something that's always felt easy for me when a lot of things happen. Matt, 10 minutes, off you go. I think the first rule in cooking, if you're not happy with it, then the customer won't be happy. So I'm quite proud of my standards. I do keep them happy. Three minutes, Matt. Time up. That's it. Time's up. Matt, skills test. Very straightforward technique. Filleted lots of fish before. Obvious to see. Very good technique. Very competent skills. Okay. The mackerel is cooked perfectly. That is really nice. However, sauce lacks seasoning. You should have tasted that yeah. as you were going. Very important. And a palate test as well. Okay. Taste, taste, taste. Okay. okay. It would have had a lot more flavour to it if you'd have tasted it. A little bit at this point, it's made a couple of silly mistakes, things I never do, but I did for some reason. Hopefully it was just down to nerves. Twenty-three-year-old sous chef Jason's career has been inspired by his family's passion for food. Chefing's in my family. My dad was head chef, my granddad was also head chef. From a young age, it's all I've ever known how to do, so it's, it's me, I suppose, and that's it's what I do. Jason, ten minutes, off you go. To cook for Michelle Brew Jr. I think would be one of the most amazing experiences. To actually cook for somebody like that that's got such a dynasty in this industry, you know, I don't think there's anything better than that, really. Two and a half minutes. That's it. Time's up. Time's up. Jason, first of all, your skills test. You obviously know how to fillet fish, but I think under the pressure, you had three different techniques going on in one time there. You still delivered a, a good fillet, not bad. Jason, that is really nice. Your flavours come through really, really well. However, the mackerel is where it lets you down. It's slightly overcooked.
If that come up to me in a restaurant, more than happily eat the whole lot. I don't think that it's some of the best stuff I've ever done, but I'm happy with what I produced. It was a good source. We'll have to see what happens now, I think. That was good. Really good round there. Four competent cooks. I'm pleased with some real potential in the room today. Scott was first up, filleted his fish quite well, left a little bit of meat on the bone. Then he cooked his fish very, very well indeed. Very good sauce. I think the young man is a talent. Very straightforward, fantastic flavours, and he delivered. I'd love to go further in this competition, just to get the experience, to get the feedback. Um, I think it'd really improve me as a person. Hayley started off really well. She did show good knife skills. But Michelle would be horrified to get someone at this level cooking raw fish and a sauce that was just reduced to a glob. She's an enigma to me, Hayley. I can't match up the cook who can fillet fish very well, but can't cook it very well. If I didn't get a chance to go and cook for Michelle Rue, I'd be obviously very disappointed. It would be really upsetting if I went home today. Matt did great filleting that mackerel. Very effective technique, great when you're under pressure. Criminally, Matt didn't taste his sauce, and it needed more seasoning. Normally, I don't make the same mistakes like that I made today, hopefully, and if there is a next time, then I won't make the same mistakes again, you know? Jason has the most unusual filleting technique I've ever seen, but he got the fillets off very well indeed. And I loved his food. Creamy sauce, very nice indeed. And he was tasting as he went. I was impressed with that fellow, Jason. Jason knows what he's doing there. The only problem I had was his mackerel was just a little bit overcooked. I've felt better. I'm not as confident as I think I should have been. Hopefully, I'll have done enough to get through to the end. I have to say, Michelle would have been very happy with three out of the four chefs that we saw today. You and I both think that one of these is weak. Do we both agree on which one is weak? I think so. The chef that's going to leave us today is Hayley. That was well done. Next time round, you're cooking for my boss, Chef Michel. Don't disappoint me. Over the moon that I've gone through. It's great. Yeah. I think if anything better, they could have gone well today. In the next round, I think I have to raise my game a little bit, but I'm confident that I can do that. I'm ecstatic to be going through to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. I'm delighted that I'm through. Uh, I would have hated to have gone out in the first round. Hopefully now I can just um, let, let my cooking do the talking. It's day two. Scott, Matt and Jason are back. And this time, they have the chance to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. To get through to the quarter-final, they have to show him they can deliver the precise, inspiring food expected at this highest level. You worked very hard in the last round. You're now here. You wanted the chance to cook. For Michelle Rue, here he is. In front of you, you have two wood pigeon. You have 50 minutes to create and cook two different great dishes. At the end of the day, two of you will be going home, but one of you will be a quarter-finalist. Cook very well. Off you go. <laughs> This is a chance for the chefs to demonstrate their versatility. Their larder includes butternut squash, pancetta, red cabbage, blackberries, vine tomatoes, wild mushrooms and fresh herbs. They also have a selection of plates to give Michelle a sense of their presentation skills. We want to find a chef who would be able to grace any of the Michelin-starred kitchens. 
A good chef needs a competitive edge. He needs to be able to take on the challenge and to deliver the goods. Beautiful, gamey, wild pigeons. They are meaty and very, very flavoursome. Very versatile and delicious. If they can cook it absolutely perfectly and get that nice gamey flavour, fine. Overcooked too dry, I don't want it. Undercooked and blue, don't want it. They're going to have to be right on the money here. It's amazing to cook for myself, Virginia, simply because the, the prestige that comes with it. The cooking that he does at the minute is a bit of an inspiration, so I'm really looking forward to it. What are you cooking for us? Um, I'm going to do a couple of starters today. I'm going to do a simple pigeon breast on braised red cabbage with some crispy pancetta. And then I'm going to do, same again, wood pigeon breast, a little butternut squash puree and a wild mushroom and mustard sauce. Where do you see yourself in five years' time then, Matt? Well, hopefully I'm working towards a Michelin star. If, if not, already have one, you know, so... Well, if, so you're cooking it right now. We expect good things from you. Is that more pressure? Um, probably now I've told you that, yeah. <laughs> is what I love. I thrive on pressure. It's, it's what I aim for. The more pressure I've got, the more I seem to come out of myself. What are you cooking for us? I'm going to do a starter with just a little bit of pan-fried pigeon, a butternut puree and some sautéed wild mushrooms. Um, for main course, doing pigeon wrapped in bacon with a bit of sage on a bit of braised red cabbage. Probably looking at doing a fruity type sauce. Not quite sure yet. Just going with the flow. Have you cooked with wood pigeon before? About eight years ago I cooked with wood pigeon, but I haven't cooked with it since, so it's uh, trying to refresh my memory of what I did back then. I'm going to be impressing Michelle today. I'm not here to just make up numbers. I'm here to stand up, be counted, represent myself, and go and get that quarter-final place. What flavours can wood pigeon take? Personally, it can take some soft herbs, nothing too harsh. What are you cooking for us? A whole roasted pigeon, butternut and sage puree, and a blackcurrant stew. And the second one, I'm going to do the pan fried breasts and roasted pistachio and smoked bacon fricassee. And what would you like to be doing in the next few years? I'd like to eventually get a Michelin star back to my hometown of, of Shrewsbury. They had one many years ago, but they lost it in the town and they haven't had one since. It would be a great achievement. Four minutes left. We've got to be finishing these dishes now. One minute to go. Last minute. Concentrate on plating up. That's it. Time's up. Twenty-three-year-old Jason's first dish is breast of wood pigeon, butternut squash puree, and a creamy bacon, pistachio, and wild mushroom fricassee. And what we're looking for is elegance. This this isn't elegant. There's a lot of puree going on there, and the the cream sauce is just splodged all over the plate. Hmm. The wood pigeon is delicious. It's been seasoned properly. The fricassee has got that lovely bacon flavour going through and crunchy pistachios, which is really nice. I like that. Good. Good flavours. But the whole thing's a slop. Jason hopes to prove his oven-baked wood pigeon with braised red cabbage and a blackcurrant jus has finesse as well as flavour. First of all, the parsley that you've put there, it's not bringing anything to the dish. The pigeon itself is cooked medium to medium well. I don't mind that. It, it, it's still quite juicy. The sauce is delicious. It's got bags of flavour. 
it, it, it's just presentation. That's all. Your sauce is lovely. It's fruity at first, and it goes down into deeper flavours. The cabbage is also very nice indeed. Jason, I don't doubt for one minute that you are a decent, talented chef, because your flavours are good. And I'd like you to consider the look and feel of your plates a bit more <laughs> before you plate them up. I think the main issue with both dishes was presentation. That's something I've got to look at getting back up in the next round, because it's one of my strong points. I can't fail on one of my strong points. Head chef Matt wants to demonstrate high-end cooking with his breast of wood pigeon, braised red cabbage and crispy pancetta. First of all, fantastic colours. Very artistic. You've given it height as well, which, which is good. I like it. Your pigeon is beautifully cooked, nice and moist. The flavour of the cabbage is very sweet and very sour, and it's also a really good accompaniment for the pigeon. It works very well. I like it. You've got that one absolutely bang on. The sweet and sharpness that's going through that red cabbage with a bit of crunch is absolutely lovely for the real deep richness that comes with that beautifully cooked pigeon breast afterwards. Really good stuff, Matt. Matt's second dish is oven roast breast of wood pigeon with butternut squash puree and a mushroom sauce. Again, it's a nicely presented plate of food. It looks... looks good. I like it. The flavours of the butternut squash and the creamy mustard sauce work very well. Uh, the pigeon, again, is pink. Possibly a little bit too pink. It all gels together really well. You definitely do understand from these two dishes what we're looking for. That's too rare for me. Like the flavour of your sauces. It's creamy sweet going into salty and meaty. That is lovely. On both these dishes, I love your presentation. I love your flavour combinations. You are a talented boy. I had a picture in my mind pretty much straight away of what I wanted to achieve. Hopefully it's something I can build upon. 29-year-old Scott's first dish is pan-fried wood pigeon with butternut squash puree and sautéed mushrooms. Presentation-wise, it's, it's a bit simplistic. There's no sauce on here. It, it, looks, it looks very dry. It looks, looks one-dimensional. The pigeon is severely undercooked. It really is not pleasant to eat. I like the idea that you have served us the offal. However, I'm not going to eat it because they're too rare. Uh, I don't want to eat rare heart of pigeon or rare liver. I really like your flavours. I think this is such a shame you didn't cook your pigeon properly. Because that hint of sweetness in the butternut squash going down to the woodiness of the mushrooms and a hint of garlic is a lovely accompaniment to that bird. You know what to put together. It's a question mark on whether you know how to cook it properly. Shame. Shame, Scott. Scott hopes to impress with his second offering of pigeon wrapped in pancetta with red cabbage and a blackberry jus. It's very, very simple. Presentation-wise, too simple. Just lacking that little care. OK, let's taste this. Mmm, your pigeon's slightly undercooked. The sauce has got a great depth of flavour and the berries work really well with that gamey meat. It's got one very strong point, that's the sauce, and the rest of it really lets it down. If you'd have given that bird another few minutes, I, I would have been really singing your praises, Scott. But you can obviously do flavour. Cook your meat. I am... 
extremely gutted because I know I can do better. It's just a little scoreboard error that's let me down. There are a few basic errors here, but I'm absolutely convinced I'm looking at three very talented chefs. Off you go. Three good chefs today. I've been really impressed by the standard. Jason definitely has to work on presentation. His first dish looked messy. Actually, the flavour combinations were really lovely. I thought that was a great dish, but it looked really slow. His second dish, again, great flavours. That sauce was beautiful. By and large, I'd like to see him work on his presentation, Jason, but I think he understands flavour. Going into the classic recipe test, I'm not going to go in there dwelling on the mistakes that I've made. I want to go in there and I want to impress people. That's what I'm going to do with a clear head and a positive attitude. Matt's combination of flavours, colours, textures on his first plate was absolutely superb. It was a very, very good plate of food. I would have been very happy with that in a fine dining establishment. His second dish, the flavours were great. The butternut squash puree was sweet, but the pigeon was undercooked. Silly little mistakes stopped Matt having an absolutely exemplary round of cooking. I think my chances are pretty strong. Um, I believe I'm in a good position. I just need to maintain the same standards I showed in the first round. Scott's first dish, I thought the combination of those flavours was really good. Absolutely pointless because the pigeon was raw. That pigeon heart was beating on the plate. You can't eat raw heart of pigeon, no. Scott's second pigeon dish was again undercooked. Such a shame because the sauce was wonderful. I'm pretty sure Scott can do it. I like his flavour combinations, but he has got to deliver in the classic recipe test. I don't think it was my full potential. I believe that I've got a hell of a lot more in me, um, and I'll try and prove that in the next round. We've seen lots of chefs pick themselves up from a bad round and win this competition. We've also seen people that were obvious front runners completely and utterly mess it up. Any one of these three could take it. Classic recipe test. We're going to ask you to cook a small leg of spring lamb with roasted vegetables and a classic jus. We also want you to cook a creamy rice pudding to be served with poached rhubarb and palmier biscuits. One hour, 20 minutes. Good luck, gentlemen. Cook very well. Off you go. Classic dishes have stayed on menus for hundreds of years because the diner absolutely loves them. This will tell us a lot about our chefs. Can they master the basic technique of roasting? Sliced leg of lamb, wonderfully roasted vegetables, and the jus. Very, very simple cooking. How can they make simple cooking great? You want it perfectly crispy and brown on the outside, it's still got to be pink in the middle. Cooked right, it's got to be one of my favourite things to eat in the whole, whole world. The second classic is a creamed rice pudding, a favourite dessert in Europe since the 17th century and once considered a luxury. Made with milk, sugar and cream, fruit can also be added. Flavoured with vanilla, it is extremely rich and it is gorgeous. There is simply nothing worse than an undercooked rice in rice pudding. And I do not want to see this today. In France, rice pudding is often served with a traditional French biscuit. The palmier biscuit is a classic French biscuit of puff pastry folded up to make a little heart. It has to be light and crisp, yet still soft and buttery in the middle. They've got to get the sweetness absolutely right because that is a very rich dish. If they can get those to balance well, that is an absolute dream. What do you think that we are looking for from you now? Consistency, I think. Hopefully if I can maintain what I, what I did before. I'd, I'd like to raise the sound a little bit. I don't think I was quite there in, in the first round. Do you understand these recipes? My worst fear was something to do with sweets. I'm not so confident with sweets, but... Oh, dear. I kind, of, kind of worked it out, but I'm all right. How much do you really want this then, Matt? Yeah, this is something I, I really want. I want to get through every stage I'm in. Sound focused? 
Well, I was until you gave me them biscuits, but we'll get there. <laughs> Slightly worrying for Matt, is his natural instinct enough to get him through this dessert? He looks worried about it. 30 minutes gone, 50 minutes left. You've got a lot of work to do, guys. If you're going to become the quarter-finalist, Scott, what do you need to do now? Prove to you the mistakes that I made in the, the first heat, um, where I went wrong with my timing and stuff and making sure the food's put perfectly. What are you going to do to your roast lamb that's going to make it shine and make it different to the others? Um, I've sealed it well, cooked it well, and then just let it rest so the juices are there come through and just to finish the sauce off. So that's a lot of flavours in there. How much does MasterChef mean to you? It means the world to me. It means me moving forward in my career. And how far can you go, Scott? I believe I've got it within me to go all the way. Whether I can prove that to you or not, we shall see. He knows in himself that he is the one that has got the most to prove. After two rare pigeons in the last round, he's got to give us absolutely perfect food this round. I'm not going to put up with undercooked lamb. Made rice pudding before? It's a recipe that my nan will kill me if I get wrong, so I better try and get it right if I can. Your nan? She will kill Why? me. Why? It's something that she always used to do for us when we were young, so it's something you would have thought by now and would have picked up from her. How important is it to you, Jason? To get through and to get a place in the, in the quarterfinals and then hopefully proceed on is exactly what I'm here to do today. Nothing else. Jason says he knows all about rice pudding because his grandmother makes it for him regularly, but can he make it fine dining? You've had an hour, 20 minutes left. Rice pudding. That one's caught slightly. Mm, got little black bits in it. Your nan wouldn't be too pleased about that one, would she? That's uh, to say the least, I think. Do you think you'll have enough time to do another one? I'd like to think so, yeah. Good. Okay. Well, you can always try. Six minutes left. One minute. Last touch. Time's up. With a quarter-final place at stake, the chef's classic dishes must reach the standards Michelle requires. First up is their roast leg of lamb. Jason, we'll start with you. First off, I think it looked great. You've really taken on board what we said in the first round, and I think that that looks really elegant. The whole plate actually screams out, eat me. Your roast leg of lamb is beautifully cooked. Lovely and golden around the outside. Well done. Thank you. The sauce is a very good roasting jus. The rosemary and honey work very well as a classic taste. Well done. Thank you. That is all so soft and moist. It's absolutely lovely. That lamb is cooked to perfection. That would just disappear in seconds. It's looking a bit too dinky. Tiny little turned carrots. I'm not so keen about the roasted tomatoes on the vine on top. The flavours are good, the seasoning's good. The roast potatoes are nice. But the one big mistake on here is the roasting of the meat. It should have that lovely golden crust that you expect on a roasted meat that's not there. Okay.
Well, it just really tastes nice. <laughs> it's a really nice flavour sensation. It's missing not a flavour, but a texture. Okay. And that texture is a bit of crispiness. Okay. This looks very nice. The roasted lamb is a really proper roasted lamb. It's got that lovely golden crust on the outside. It, it looks appetising. The lamb itself is moist, tender, beautifully pink. Very good sauce, beautiful sauce. And I would expect to see a dish like this in a top establishment. Thank you. The flavours are immense. They are so deep. I'll tell you what, that is flavour of the highest order. To come back from raw pigeon to cooking like that, is wonderful. Well done. Thank you. Very well done. Could you bring us in your rice pudding, please? It's the last chance for the chefs to impress the judges with their creamed rice pudding with rhubarb and palmier biscuits. We'll start with you, Jason. For me, a rice pudding should be served in a bowl, especially not in a flat plate. If I start on the palmier, they're really not cooked enough. The puff pastry in the middle there is quite raw. The rhubarb is cooked all the way through. There's enough sugar in it, and it really is wonderful. Your rice is not quite cooked enough. You ran out of time there because you had to make another batch. It's also a little bit too sweet. It's a shame. Rhubarb's lovely. Sweetness and acidity in perfect balance. But the rice isn't cooked. I'm not looking forward to my nan watching me making the rice pudding. It's something that she does, and she does a hell of a lot better than me, so when she sees that, there might be issues. Palmiers are not palmiers. They should be heart-shaped, but they look nice and golden. Okay. Again, I think it's too pretty. Too pretty and prissy. The rice, unfortunately, is slightly undercooked and a bit stodgy. Uh, it should be more creamy and unctuous. Okay. You've done two different sorts of rhubarb. You've done a peeled rhubarb on top, which is cooked, and a little compote there, which I think has a bit of ginger in it, which really does pick it up. It's really nice. I like that. Flavours, lovely. The rice isn't cooked properly, it's too hard. Okay. I'm definitely kicking myself about the, the little mistakes that I made this afternoon. I, I, sh I should have done a lot better than I did. I should have produced food of a, a standard that I did this morning, but hopefully I've, I've still done enough. Scott, to me, that looks lovely. Your rhubarb is lovely, well cooked and sweet. Your rice pudding is cooked. It, it's good. It's just lacking a wee bit of sugar. The best textured rice pudding by far. Best looking rice pudding by far. Uh, a spoonful of sugar, Scott, and you would have taken this round with a plum. The comments from Michelle, I was very, very pleased with. The fact that I just turned it around from nothing to something was just immense for me. It's fair to say that you have had ups and downs in equal measure, the three of you. So give us time to sort this one out. But thank you for your efforts. Off you go. No one's cooked today fault free, but there have been moments of real class amongst these guys. The first thing I saw of Matt was that pigeon on top of the cabbage and a bit of deep purple sauce. It looked professional, it looked top drawer, and it tasted top drawer. It was exactly what we're looking for. 
His second pigeon dish, I thought, was, a, a, again, an achievement. Lovely flavours, beautifully presented food. It was good. In the classic recipe test, I think Matt let himself down. His roasted leg of lamb was not roasted and it was anemic. It certainly didn't achieve the high standards that he had set out in the first round. And the rice pudding was undercooked. It was still hard. How do you see two ends of one chef that delivers you one of the best pigeon dishes you've ever tasted, followed by a rice pudding that's not cooked? Who, who is it? Who does that? I'm hoping the judges do remember what I showed them this morning. Hopefully they've kept the good points in their head and they'll use that when they make the decision this afternoon. Jason's first pigeon dish had bags of flavour. I just think it looked really sloppy. His second pigeon dish, pigeon was slightly overcooked and was not presented in the way that you would expect. The sauce was fantastic. His presentation improved immensely in the classic round. The roasted leg of lamb, he really did a good job there. It was properly roasted. His rice pudding was an absolute nightmare. The rice wasn't cooked. That's not right. He has proved to us that he has got the passion and will to go through. But none of those dishes really set the house on fire. I just hope that they can see that the things I have done and I've done well, I hope would like to think would be enough to take me through. Scott's versatility test was a disaster. That first plate of food was not only visually awful, uh, but you couldn't eat it. His second pigeon dish was not much better. The pigeon, again, was severely undercooked. After the end of the versatility test, I thought he's going to have to really deliver in the classic recipe test, but by golly, did he? That lamb was just stunning. That sauce was just dreamy. I mean, that is food of the highest order. His rice pudding was cooked properly. It had the lovely, creamy consistency that we were looking for. Unfortunately, it didn't quite have enough sugar. In the classic test, it was a different Scott. This afternoon, it just proved a point that I can do good food and I can do it well. Um, and I think I pulled it back out the hat. We have three chefs, although, of course, yes, they've made mistakes. They have, all three of them, shown us real touches of skill and class. This is a genuinely very tough decision. going through to the next round is Matt. Well done, very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Feeling disappointed, let myself down. It was great to cook for Michelle Rowe. I just wish I could have performed a bit better for him. I really wish Matt the best luck and I hope he goes on. I hope I, I lost to the winner, shall we say. Michelle and Greg give me some good compliments and, and see enough in me to send me through to the quarterfinals is a great honour. I'm really pleased that I was here and I'm really pleased that I'm going to be coming back. Matt will be back for the quarterfinal to battle it out for the title of Professional Master Chef. <laughs> <laughs>